Hey guys, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I am so glad that you're here and that you're watching. My name is Samuel Perez and this is the first ever video of a big series that I'm doing that's all about my gym exercise a lifestyle. So I'm actually going to be taking you guys with me to the gym and you're going to be seeing pretty much how I work out, what kind of exercises I do. I'm going to be sharing with you guys a little bit about what God is speaking into my heart on a daily I really wanted to start incorporating some videos that you guys can just follow me in my life, especially now that I moved out and got my own apartment. So I've got kind of my own creating space. And I spent a lot of time at the gym, like ridiculous amount of time at the gym. If, if I were to tell you guys, it's kind of a little bit embarrassing for me, but I spend around three hours every single day at the gym. <laughs> you might be asking like, Samuel, why do you spend that much time at the gym? Honestly, it's like my safe place. I started working out 10 years ago. I love everything about working out. There's so many different components. I'm not even going to go into it, but I am getting ready to go and head out to my gym, which is walking distance from where I live. But before I do that, I have to make a, my little pre-workout and my protein shake. So I've got my protein right here. This is 100% gold standard whey. And I've been using this since I first started working out like years ago. I just company probably just on my money alone can suffice. <laughs> I've been buying it for years now, but I don't know if it's the best protein. I use it. It's worked for me. It's great stuff. I really, really enjoy it. And then for my pre-workout, I already poured it in here. It's amino energy, which I absolutely love. I'm not crazy thrilled about this one. I think there's like sugars and stuff in, in that. It, it gets the job done. But the amino energy, I love this stuff. I never do a workout without my amino energy because I feel the difference from when I use it versus when I don't use it. When I use it, I can get back into the gym. I can start working out again. And even well, the very next day, like I'm not sore. If I don't use it, I'm incredibly sore. And it, it's, it's, it's really hard to get back into my workout. And I like to work out seven days a week. <laughs> Today's a Friday and I'm restarting my routine already. It's kind of a weird day, honestly, to start this series, but I was originally going to start it on Monday when I first started my workout week, but that didn't work out. My All of the footage that I filmed got deleted for some reason. Uh, just wasn't part of God's plan for that day. So I'm starting today on a Friday and uh, starting the, the week, I'd say probably like the last end of my workout routine. So you're going to you're kind of coming in a kind of like a weird day for me. My Friday workouts aren't usually amazing, but hopefully it will be for this vlog. So, all right, I got my pre-workout. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my green juice. So if you're anything like me, you might not be a fan of vegetables. I hate vegetables. I hate, hate vegetables. So what I have decided to do is instead of eating my vegetables, I got this at Whole Foods and this is new. This is something I've been trying new. So I don't know if it's any good, but it says it has a ton of vitamins and all types of other stuff in here. And so I'm usually pretty honest about the products that I use. If I use it, I'm not being paid for it. Nobody sponsors me. Um, just I'm like vegetables in my diet. I need greens in my diet and I don't have enough of that. I'm getting older. And I know that I need that. And I got to take care of God's temple, my body. So um, I usually mix that in with my pre-workout because if I don't, it tastes absolutely disgusting. It's just like, it's, uh, it's really bad. It's, it's, it's not tasty at all. So I've got this amazing bottle here. Just giving you guys kind of a tour of this before we get started, which holds my pre-workout and my protein at the same time. And it's usually dirty because I don't clean my stuff. So, <laughs> no, I'm joking, I do. I do see it every now and then. But it's got one side protein and then the other side pre-workout. So you will see this in my video a ton. Um, just while I'm talking in different stuff, you'll see me drinking my pre-workout before the workout or during the workout, whenever I can get it in. But uh, I am super excited to film this. So let's get into it. Let's go to the gym. All right, so here we are at the gym. Finally got here. It was about a, let's say like a minute walk. But I want to start talking a little bit about what got me started working out in the first place as I do my stretches. So before I do any type of workout, I want to make sure that I stretch my body and you should also be stretching your body as well. And so first couple of stretches I'm going to start off with is I do pretty like simple stuff. So I just kind of do my, my upper body first and then I'll do a little bit of my lower body and then we'll get on the floor and then I'll show you a little bit of how I do my floor stretches. And I pretty much do the same stretches 
every single time that I come to the gym. I will take about 15 minutes to stretch. So I know that seems a little bit excessive, but I am now 28 years old and I'm getting old. And so I need to stretch my body out. But anyways, one of the reasons why I started working out was because I honestly, I, I wanted to look good. <laughs> I never had, I would say an incredibly amazing body. I wasn't blessed like some people are where they just have an incredible, well, they have incredible genes. I had to work hard for this body. I was what people would call is skinny fat. <laughs> I didn't like the way that I looked. And so I think I was 18 when I decided to change that. And by the way, guys, we're going to hold these stretches for about, I would say 60 seconds. All right. So you guys are probably familiar with this one. This one goes, I used to do this in school, but I was about 18 when I first started working out. And when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. I was actually one of the first ever workouts I was doing was in my room and I would do these video workouts. One of them was the Pussycat Dolls workout dance video. So clearly I did not know what I was doing. And when I went to the gym for the first time to sign up, there was like an offer or something for a personal trainer. And I was like, yeah, I don't mind. Uh, I need someone to show me the ropes of how to do stuff. And uh, my main goal was to have a swimmer's body. And so I told my trainer what I wanted, which was to have a swimmer's body. And he was like, yeah, we can do that for you. So he pretty much taught me the basics of what I needed to know. And I would say that probably the first three months were the hardest to just start that new habit that I had never had before. After the first three months, that's when I was like, oh, okay, like this is getting a little bit easier. And then I saw results. And guys, when you start seeing results after working out, it becomes so addicting. So I had a pigeon chest, which my pit, my my chest would go in instead of like out. I had like no chest basically. It was non-existent. I was really insecure about that. And I remember the first time I was like in the hot tub in the jacuzzi and uh, I was taking a selfie or something. And I saw a little bit of some pecs coming out for the first time. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have pecs for the first time. So I was really excited about that. And that kind of got me addicted to working out and coming back in. But after my trainer, I think I did like maybe only like 10 or 12 sessions with him and the rest I was like at this point I know what to do because he taught me what to do and I had such a passion for fitness I had finished uh, acting school at this point I, I would say I had a passion for helping people and fitness was a part of like helping people all right so the next stress that I'm doing by the way guys is I'm holding my leg up to my butt cheek and I'm just stretching out my quads here so you want to make sure that you get a nice little quad stretch but I had a passion for helping people and I feel like my life had completely changed when I first started going into fitness. I felt good about my body for the first time in a really long time. Everything about my life changed. My eating patterns changed. It was good for my cholesterol. And so I didn't do it for a spiritual reason because I wasn't into super into religion at that time. I was born and raised Christian, but I didn't really, I was kind of living la vida loca. As you guys know, I was a part of a different lifestyle, a gay lifestyle. <laughs> And so I was not focused on Jesus at that time, but I was focused on looking better for other people, uh, <laughs> trying to look attractive. But I enjoyed working out a lot. And so I was like, you know what? Instead of acting, I think I'm going to be a personal trainer and maybe do acting on the side or whatever comes, comes. So I started getting into personal training. And then that started me on my journey of moving to New York. And if you guys have not watched my testimony video, I encourage you to watch it. That's like my whole story. But I was training people for about four years. And then after New York, came back to Miami, still training people. So the gym, even, even while I was on a cruise ship, working on the cruise ship um, <clears throat> as crew staff, I was still working out. The gym has always been a part of my life. It's a place where I can be social. It's a place that gets me out of my house. It's a place where I can just like think about my thoughts during the day, uh, process on some things that I've been going through. So it's, it's a really a safe haven place for me. All right, now, uh, now I'm gonna, <laughs> just like through my phone. Now I'm gonna lift up my knee to my chest. So even still today, gym is one of my favorite places to go to and that's why i'm here seven days a week practically i was gonna do five days a week but then i just couldn't stay away <laughs> and uh but each day i target different muscle groups and so i'm not targeting the same muscle groups every single day that'd be crazy yeah i'm in here for about three hours the first i'll tell you guys 
uh, the first 15 minutes of me stretching. Then it's uh, about 30 to 45 minutes of me cardio, uh, of me doing cardio, uh, of me cardio. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll do 45 minutes of cardio uh, or 30, depending on how fat I feel that day. And, and then I'll lift for about an hour and 30 minutes. And then I'll do like a little bit of recovery afterward. You know, um, this gym has an incredible uh, recovery center. They have like massage machines and head light therapy. And so I'll do a little bit of that. Let's hit the floor. So on top of being at the gym for a really, really long time, every single day, uh, I've been really wanting to make content of just like my everyday life and just kind of have you guys follow me around with my daily thoughts with the Lord, what I'm thinking about every single day. And so, and I know that YouTube really, the YouTube algorithm really prefers when people upload daily. And so I want to challenge myself to upload daily. <laughs> and so this series, I'm going to try to upload every single day, every time I go to the gym. So you guys are really going to see a big part of my life and you guys are going to be able to jam me a lot better. And so personally, I don't know about you guys. And so, and you'll let me know if, if, if so by the way, guys, this stretch, just touch your toes. So I do, I just touch my toes here, but let me know if you guys like enjoy listening to YouTube videos and having long form YouTube videos. I like making short videos, but I talk a lot. And so short form is difficult for me. But personally, I listen to just people on the daily. I'm always listening to YouTube. I'm looking up podcasts I'm looking at preaching sermons. And sometimes I'm just looking at people's daily life. And especially if there's a content creator that I love, I love watching them as much as I can. And so just if there's a daily upload, I'm like, oh, I'll watch that today in the morning. So hopefully uh, as I'm making these videos, it will be a nice little treat for those of you guys who do watch my videos and care about my videos to watch every single day and just uh, feel like you have a friend to listen to every single day if you like listening. And if you don't, I don't know what you're doing on YouTube because um, <laughs> there's no talking on YouTube. It's just listening. So anyways, I do these toe touches and I like to just stretch out my hamstrings um, and then I'll do a little of these what I call butterflies, but I'll do some of these. They're just, they're a little funny looking. And then I'll take my arm and I'll go all the way around like that. And then just reach my back, right? Oh, and you might hear some cracks. And my back definitely cracks. So just get a little bit of um, momentum, some heat starting on your body. But yeah, I absolutely, I love the gym. And, and the Lord speaks to me a lot at the gym because once again, I'm processing all of my thoughts it's great, honestly. The next stretch that we're gonna do, I don't know the name of it, but you're gonna lie down flat like this. Hopefully you guys can still see me. And you're gonna, oh, hold on, this mic. You're gonna take your leg and you're gonna bring it over here. Okay, you're gonna look in the other direction, almost like you're dead here, um, just as somebody ran, ran you over. This is such a funny position. <laughs> All right, and then you're gonna switch over to the next side. Personally, I really like that stretch because I do sometimes have a little bit of back problems just from all the lifting. Uh, lifting of my worries, my burdens. But anyways, all right, so I don't wanna keep you guys any longer stretching on the floor. Let's go upstairs to start our cardio. All right, so I got the, <laughs> I got the Stairmaster behind me. I'm gonna hit this for about like 30 minutes or so because today I feel pretty good. I've been eating really clean since uh, I started thinking about doing these vlogs because I don't want to jump on here and not look fit. So I don't think I need a bunch of cardio today, but I will do 30 minutes. And I'm going to share with you guys a little bit of what God has been putting in my heart as of lately as I do these stairs. I'm setting it to four because I will be talking to you guys while I'm doing this. And so <laughs> I don't want to be breathing too heavy while I'm in the midst of doing this today. Anyway, so I actually started a little book club in my Discord server, and I have been meaning to read this book for a really long time. It's called The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. If you guys have not heard of it, it's really great. It was recommended to me by a friend to start reading it. And I just put it off for a really long time because I've been doing studies of other things and just life gets in the way. But I started reading it, and it's all about offense. 
And so you might be thinking to yourself, like, I want to read a book about advanced. That doesn't make me feel good. Well, sometimes it's good for you to read a book about, you know, things that you might not like. But I got into it and ooh, here goes the, the air. And uh, some things really stood out to me, which is the difference between phileo love and agape love. So you guys may be familiar that agape love is like love that is self-sacrificing, right? Phileo love is still a form of love, but it's more of like, I'm going to give you this love and then I'm going to receive a love from you. So it's like very sort of transactional. Agape love is giving love without ever thinking of receiving it back. And so there's many times in our lives, especially if you're a minister or if you're like sort of pastor figure, it can be really difficult at times to minister to people who are just extremely cruel to you or do bad things. You know, you are going into the relationship thinking, oh man, I'm going to love this person. I'm going to be there for them. I'm going to help them because that's what Jesus told, tells us that we should do. We should love people and be there for them. And, you know, at first in, in the beginning, it's easy because you don't have that many betrayals. But then as time progresses and time keeps going, it becomes harder for you to trust people because life does get in the way. And uh, people have issues. And those issues, they come to the surface when you start helping people. And so many times in my life, I've helped people and they have been absolutely horrible to me. Um, very, very horrible. I've given so much of my life to individuals who I've just from one day to the next, either gossip behind my back, turned away from me, forgotten about me. And then you're like, man, this really makes me feel like I shouldn't love people at all. And I learned the importance of boundaries last year and I made a whole podcast about it. And I would say, go check it out if you need to learn about boundaries. But I think sometimes we set boundaries that are a little bit too high and we don't, we're not able to love anymore. We're not able to love or appreciate people in our lives. Uh, someone's watching this like, Samuel, take your hands off the thing. You're not working out hard enough. It's, it's hard to talk and do this at the same time. <laughs> but <laughs> that's an excuse. I put my hands there all the time. But yeah, I just like, I in ministry, I found it a little bit more difficult to love people after the many, many, many betrayals back to back, back to back. And you're like, man, is this, is this even worth it anymore? I think I probably have maybe like three people in my ministry out of five years or so that still talk to me and text me and that I feel like the love I poured into them actually produced fruit in their life. Three out of, I'd say hundreds of individuals. And so it's very difficult. Uh, but it sometimes has prevented me from loving people in my life because I'm like, this person is just going to do me wrong. They're never going to appreciate the love. And, uh, and the book kind of called me out a little bit on it because I do still love people. I mean, I, I have to as a minister. Um, but my heart wasn't in the right position anymore like it used to be. And um, I'm like being really heavy now. <laughs> That's all right. Keep doing the cardio, Samuel. You need it. Yeah, it's, it, it's gotten harder over the years. And the book was just like, you don't trust God enough. You don't trust that if you give love, that God will eventually fulfill that love back to you. And it's true. Like the words of the Bible say that we are to pray for our enemies we're supposed to be blessing our enemies not just doing good to those who do good back to us but to do good even to those who might curse us and so it was basically calling me out on my trust my lack of trust in God to fulfill this love that sometimes people don't give back to me you know it's perfectly logical to say someone didn't love me and I'm gonna put that guard up you know I don't want to I don't want to love people as, as I used to anymore. And I'm not saying, you know, ignore toxic relationships or don't set boundaries because you need boundaries. But uh, there are times when we could love people and we just don't because we're, we're like, what's the point? You know, um, I'm going to love people who are, I'm going to like reap fruit from. And we have enough, we have enough energy that day to love someone we don't. And so I know my boundary now. I know my limit of what I can do and what I cannot do for people. Sometimes I'm, I'm very well within that you know, energy of giving love out and I don't do it because I'm scared. I'm like, that's that new person in my life. That's not going to go anywhere. And I shouldn't be thinking like that, but it's mostly fear, fear that I'll be rejected or fear that I just won't receive that love back. And that never feels good. But then I think I'm like, if I really believe 
that I give this agape love. I'm following the footsteps of Jesus because Jesus gave his whole life for people who would never even accept him. And he didn't set a boundary <laughs> for those individuals. He said, I'm going to love them even if they don't love me back because I trust in the Father. And so I'm learning how to trust in the Father's love for me, that he will repay back that love when others don't, that he'll be there for me when others are not going to be. And so I'm really working on that in my life, journaling a lot about that. I've realized in the midst of journaling, I have a couple of fears that I have to start targeting. So that's just my little daily thoughts with the Lord of what I've been coming across lately. So I'm gonna finish up this cardio and, uh, and then we're gonna hit, hit the weights. All right, guys, so we just finished with the cardio. So we did 30 minutes and uh, I feel pretty, actually, I think we did 37 minutes. I was sweating a lot, went to the bathroom. <laughs> I used the bathroom and uh, now I'm back out and I'm gonna be doing some cable bicep curls. And before I do that, I'm gonna take off my shirt because it is sweaty and I'm gonna remove the pump cover. So you guys can actually see that I do have muscles indeed. They are small, but humble. Um, yes, that is <laughs> Shakira quote. <laughs> no, I'm going to take, take off my shirt. Uh, I reveal the wife beater under here. Small but humble so you don't confuse them with mountains. Um, I think that's one of my all-time favorite quotes from Shakira. <laughs> if you guys don't know that song, you're missing out. Um, all right, so just changing up. You guys might not be familiar. So we have these kind of tools. They're just laying around. And you can switch these out on the cable machine. So I'm switching a single-handed bicep curl to, uh, let me let me fix this necklace, hold on. Because it kept, flip, it kept flipping, and so it's not, not, not good while I'm moving around. Um, all right, so we're gonna use this stick to be able to do some bicep curls. I like to do three sets of 12. If I can hit 12 easily, that means it's time for me to, to go up. Um, but this is a pretty good starter exercise, I would say, to just kind of warm up the biceps because this cable is pretty easy as opposed to like something a little bit more harder with, with free weights. I'm gonna go with 60 pounds here. Okay, maybe 55 pounds was a little bit too much to begin with. Let's just warm up the muscles a little bit before we go in harder. Oh my gosh, this thing keeps flipping over. This is probably the better option for the microphone, honestly. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my cross necklace back on. Hold on, guys. All right, so now that my microphone is finally fixed, and uh, hopefully we won't have any more problems with that, we're gonna start off 44, 44 pounds, and we're gonna do this for 12 reps. So that's four, five. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. Um, so we are doing biceps and triceps today. I know it's kind of a weird combination. Usually, I will start off, start off my weak workout with a little bit of bicep and chest. But like I said, today's Friday. And so on the weekends, I kind of do a shorter version of my long week. And that means I'm doing biceps and triceps today. And then I'm gonna be doing back and chest tomorrow. And then I'm gonna be doing legs on Sunday. So, if I make it in tomorrow, because my parents are visiting for the weekend. So let's see if I do. I think I will. All right. So if anybody wants to give me any type of recommendations when it comes to music, Christian music specifically to play at the gym, I am very much open to that. I usually have to listen to some Kanye, Jesus is King album, because most Christian hip hop, I mean, let's just be honest, it's not very good. Um, and I love indie music, so sometimes I'll listen to indie Christian music. Um, specifically, I'm going to shout out an artist I really, really love. His name is Taylor Armstrong. I think that was 12. You can count me on that. Um, but I love, 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 love listening to Taylor Armstrong. I actually found him on a playlist, and I didn't even know who he was at first, but every time his songs kept coming up, I was like, oh, I like his song. And then I was like, oh, I like this song. And then I started to realize I was saving the same songs from the same artist. So I listened to him, but sometimes it's a little slow for the chaos of like workout. So I am looking for new music. If you guys have any type of recommendations, leave them down below in the comments. Share with me your Spotify playlist if you want. 
All right, we're gonna move on to the next exercise. All right, okay, since we are already here at this cable machine, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this up. Yes, it is adjustable for those of you who don't know. And I'm gonna use the same tool, but now we're gonna target some triceps. So I think I'm gonna have to go a little bit lower because I did do an extra set. So that was four, last one was on 66. So, oh, the devil's number. But I was, this is 44 pounds. So I can probably go a little bit more with this. I'll do this set. So I'll try to do 12. This is probably the fifth one. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. I'm going to increase that to 55. Actually, let's push it. Let's go for 60. Why not? I know my arms are going to be very sore tomorrow because these videos have been keeping me fit, dog. I usually am playing around on my phone a lot if I am not doing the videos. Uh, so it's it's a good, nice little accountability to have the, the record button watching me so I can focus on my workouts. If not, I will definitely just sit around and take meetings or Zoom calls or something. So, <laughs> all right, let's start on the second set now. One, two, three, this is 55. Five, 10, 11, and 12. All right, cool. So I'm usually not into country music at all. I don't like country music, except if it's like classic country, like Dolly Parton or Glenn Campbell. But I was just listening to this song on my playlist um, called Seven Summers by Morgan Wallace, I think. <laughs> that song is amazing. <laughs> It makes me want to appreciate country music a lot more because uh, it's a beautiful song. Um, so check it out if you if you're into that kind of thing. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one more set and then we're gonna finish up here. We're gonna move to another uh, probably a bicep exercise. All right, okay. Now we are going to go in with just some simple bicep curls. So I'm gonna pick up some free weights. I'm gonna do 30 pounds and see if I can move it up from 30 pounds, maybe like 32 or 35. Actually, you know what? No. I'm gonna do 37 pounds because I have reached 40 pounds before. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna switch over to do a, what is that, is that a superset? Um, I think a superset to doing some head crushers at the same time. Um, yeah, I think. We got 37 and I'm gonna do them uh, seated for now because I already have my camera set up that way. But you ever just look in the mirror and <laughs> you think I am nowhere near where I want to be. And so if you look in the mirror and you're not completely satisfied with the way that you look, that's a good thing because it will help motivate you to continue to keep going. But it also sucks sometimes. So you're just like, I work so hard and I don't get the results that I want. I know what that feels like. Took off the pump cover and thought I was gonna look fitter than what I actually did. and. Not exactly where I want to be yet, but that's why we're here, you know? Keep going day in and day out until we get to where we want to be. And really, half of that is just food. Eating clean and eating right. And that's eight, 11, and 12. Oh man, my shoulders are burning because I did shoulders yesterday. All right, I'm gonna put this down for a second. All right, so. Now we're gonna do this thing that's called head crushers. It's exactly what you think it's gonna be. Let's let's hit it. You're gonna take your two free weights and you're gonna uh, bring them all the way up and then just push them down like that. Give your your elbow should be like at a 90 degree angle, like this. And just like you're about to crush your head with the weights. 12. Eight. All right, a little bit of my stomach was showing there. Hopefully the video did not catch that. So what do you guys think about that phileo slash agape um, stuff I was talking about? Does that relate to you guys at all? Do you find it hard sometimes to be able to love people who you know are not gonna be able to love you back? Or is that like very easy for you? Do you have trust in God in that area of your life? Put it down in the comments. And don't forget guys to like this video and subscribe, especially if you wanna watch the other videos that I make after this. Like I said, I'm gonna really challenge myself and push myself to upload daily. It's gonna be a real challenge for me, but I am I'm up for that challenge. All right, I'm gonna do 
two more bison curls and two more head crushers off camera. All right, okay, let's hit this one last time. I'm gonna try to go for 12. Oh, of course, the camera's off. I'm trying to get like a back shot right here for those of you guys who are watching to see how to target the muscle. Two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh gosh, eleven. One more. Twelve. And now we're gonna try to do the um, head smashers from a different angle, or head crushers, I should say. I'm listening to Andy Manel right now. I really like him. He's one of my favorite Christian rappers, I would say. Because he sounds like Kanye. <laughs> oh, that's hurting. Oh, that hurts. Okay, so I want to ask one more question here. And basically that is, if you can do one thing for God, whether that's become an evangelist or a worship artist or share the gospel with 10 people, you know, what would that one thing be? And I want to challenge you guys to actually do that. So if you ask the Lord and you ask him to challenge you, I believe he'll give you that response and then challenge yourself to do it in like a week's time. I think sometimes the fear of doing something actually keeps us from doing it. And even when I thought about this gym vlog, there were so many steps, uh, including losing all of the footage that I recorded the first time doing this. There were steps that prohibited me from starting the series, but I didn't want that to stop me because I knew this series could probably help one person or many people. And so, <laughs> excuse me, just burped. How are you doing? But if you could help one person or do something that you feel like God is calling you to do, what would that be? Leave that in the comment section. And how can we keep you accountable to that? So I do read the comments. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on to another section of the gym. Okay, so I definitely have a love-hate relationship with this machine because on one hand, I feel it working and it works so well, guys. This machine is incredible for biceps because it keeps you like exactly where you need to be. Sometimes I have a problem with that. But besides loving this machine, one of the reasons I hate it is because every time I do it, I'm like the weakest in this area, which means I'm either just not rolling my biceps uh, correctly with the free weights or something about this machine just is like ridiculously heavy or something. I have no idea. So I usually will do, uh, I will say probably, hey, my camera looks bright. You good, homie? Okay, um, so I probably will do like around, um, like 80, I think that's the most I've ever done. Like 80 or 70 around there. So let's, let's start with that. So you guys can see my dirt faces. All right, so that's one, two, three, four. The key is to try to go all the way down. Eight, nine, see I told you it's hard. Yeah. 10, and 80 shouldn't even be that much for me. That's like 40 pounds. Well, I guess, yeah, that's 40 pounds each. Yeah. One more. Oh, she is... I couldn't bring it up. All right, wow. I actually feel really energized, and I, I think one of the reasons why I feel pretty good going to the gym today is because I've been eating right. Uh, I made myself an Israeli salad the other day, which came out so good. It's essentially just chopped up cucumbers, tomatoes, scallions, or spring onions. I don't know what that's called. Uh, <laughs> but I chopped them up. That was the first time I ever made an Israeli salad before. I've had them in Israel, and so that's what inspired me to make it. And then the fact that like I just can't have rice for a meal every single day if I'm trying to lose weight. So guys, everybody's body is different. When it comes to my specific body, I know my body for some reason. I just cannot have carbs. I just cannot. Like my body just does not want to process the carbs. Um, or when it does process them, it just turns it into fat. Um, and people will be like, oh, Samuel, it's all about calorie in, calorie out. That's how you, you know, lose weight. But I have tested that. 
I have had one meal a day with carbs. And it's like, all I had was one meal, which means I worked out way more than any type of calories I was putting in. And I still got fat. So <laughs> doesn't work, <laughs> doesn't work. Um, I tried it, trust me. It's just like, I, the only way I lose weight, I have tested it is if I just cut out carbs from my diet. So I can only really have carbs like probably one, one time a day for one, one of my meals. So I'll do a whole another vlog one day. I'm um, talking about kind of what I eat on the, on the daily when it comes to meal prepping. That won't be for today, but, but yeah, that's why I feel so good. I have a lot of energy today because of that. Um, I guess the Israeli salad and those sort of fatty foods, um, with a little bit of the vegetable carbs or whatever is giving me a little bit more energy, which is good because I used to be addicted to Taco Bell. So I still love Taco Bell dog. I'll talk more about that later. Let's get started again. All right. Okay, guys. So I'm going to finish up my third set here. Four. Five. I had to lower it a little bit. That's 10. Even with 10, I can't complete this. Oh, gosh. I'm trying so hard. Let me not burst some blood vessel while I do this, you know? All right, so I'm gonna have to lower one more time and then I'll do like another set. That should be a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go down to 60 pounds, I believe. Let's just try to finish it up while we can. Ah. Ten. Two. Four. <laughs> I just, yeah, I can't do it. All right, so I got done with my three sets of 12 on the bicep curl machine. Now this behind me, this is a seated dip machine. I had to make sure that it was a seated dip machine. And I usually can do these without the sitting. I can do them on open air. Um, I'll probably save that for another video unless I decide I wanna do more exercises today. But um, but yeah, let's go ahead and let's get into this. So this is, uh, I wanna do some machines for you guys today so that if you are watching this and are gonna start working out with me or kind of following my routine, if you're a guy, I don't recommend my routine for, for women. But I mean, if you want, like, I mean, a, a woman can never get like jacked um, without like the help of steroids. So I guess you could follow my routine if you're a woman, but most times women will go for more of like, a, instead of 12, like a 20 rep kind of deal. Um, but anyways, besides the point, uh, yeah, if you're starting with me and are working out with me now, um, these machines will kind of be like an easy beginner start. Let's start this off. You're gonna make sure that your elbows are in, not like out like this, they're in, close to your body, and then just push them down. So that's three, four. I think I can actually do a lot more on this machine. So I'm gonna go up after this. I say that like every time, don't I? 13, 14, 15. Do any of you guys have an air fryer? Because I bought an air fryer. You probably saw that in the beginning of my video, but I bought an air fryer and I don't know how to make some amazing chicken recipes. And so I'm in the need of some great air fryer chicken recipes that are meal prep -able. meal prepable. So if you, if you have some of those, uh, send those to me or put them in the comments down below because I, I hate cooking chicken. I think it's just like the, the rawness of the chicken breast is so gross to me. Um, it like really grosses me out. And, and that reminds me, I have to cook chicken today because I'm almost out of chicken. So, well, I should probably, maybe tomorrow. And I'm glad my parents are visiting me this weekend because they can cook for me. I don't have to cook. Even though they're, my dad's pretty good, but my mom's not the best cooker, so. Um, all right, let's get started again, do a second set, and then we'll finish up with this. Um, gonna go up to 205 here. So one, two, three, four, five, ten, eleven, and 12. And yes, I am aware that I make dumb faces while I work out because it's heavy weight. So here we are now doing another bicep exercise. We are just going to bring this all the way down and then bring it back up like this. So something that I like to do is I like to just kind of like grab on here. So I make sure that my like, my arms are all the way right over here and it helps me to just kind of balance a little bit. So these are hammer curls, I believe. And I try to keep my elbow in instead of my elbow out. So in like that. 
So that's four. And then after this, I think I'll do one more tricep, like tricep keep and pull down probably. And then we'll be done with our workout here. It's almost nighttime, guys. I've been here for like two hours. I feel like every time I go to the gym, my day is just wasted if I don't wake up early. Luckily today I did wake up early and I got a haircut. If you couldn't tell, I got to ride my electric scooter around the city. So that's always fun. I got on a bridge and also I'm like, if I'm talking to this exercise, that means I'm not doing enough weight. But yeah, I got on a bridge and I thought it was hilarious. I was just laughing on the bridge because how ridiculous is it to see someone on a bridge with an electric scooter. I was like, those cars are probably laughing at me. I was laughing at myself. It goes 28 miles per hour. <laughs> I was having the time of my life. I was like, I'm wild. I'm doing great. But yeah, that was fun. I love going out, riding my electric scooter throughout the city and getting to see all the, the parts of the city that I haven't seen before. It does feel a little dangerous though sometimes. I, I gotta pray before going on that scooter. I'm gonna get hit by a car. <laughs> All right, so two more sets, we'll be done. Here we are at the tricep pull down machine. So I'm gonna do a drop set with this. I love doing drop sets with the tricep pull down machine. I believe it's one of the reasons why I have such like a large tricep because of the, the drop sets. I started doing drop sets on triceps pull down since I first started working out. And ever since then, I just have continued it. And my muscle, my muscle tricep has always been bigger than like all the rest of my other muscles so i don't know why i don't do drop sets for other things but i just love doing it for the triceps it's like very easy for me and it's uh it's kind of fun for me so let's go ahead and start at 55 pounds 55 pounds yes and what a drop set means basically is like i'm gonna do 12 then right after i am going to do 60 then right after i'm gonna do 60 well 71 here oh 66 here um the devil's number but <laughs> We're gonna do 12, then we're gonna do 10, then we're gonna do eight. So it's like you drop, uh, you increase the weight, but you drop the reps. So one, two, three, 11, and 12. All right. And then we are gonna do 10 now. Right after one, two, nine, 10. And then we got to do, we're gonna do eight. Let's see if we can even reach eight. I might just cut it off at six. It's hard, it's it like drop sets. That's, that's why the muscle gets big because you're really pushing it to the extreme. But this is my last workout. I might do some crunches on the crunch ab machine. And I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about my body goals. <laughs> One, well, this is three, four and eight. It was pretty brave of me to wear a wife beater on a day that is not chest day. So I'll do some of these. I don't know how to pose. All right. All right. So just a little bit about kind of the body goals that I want to achieve. I've been working on this for a while now. And I think the main thing is I wanna lose weight in this area. <laughs> I wanna keep the bigness that I've got going on. I've got a pretty good chest definition for right now. It'd be even better when I cut because anytime that you lose weight, your muscles are obviously gonna, they're gonna pop out way more. And so with the more that I cut, the more that definition is gonna start to show up. But I really wanna get rid of this, like this puffiness, this flabbiness. All of my fat, you know, for different people, they get their fat distributed in different ways. Mine goes to my, to my butt and to my belly. It goes in order to my butt, then my belly. Well, I'm sorry, my belly, then my butt. And in order for me to lose the weight, it will drop off of my butt first and then drop off of my belly uh, after that. Um, so the way that we gain it is the way that we lose it. And for whatever reason, my genetic code likes to gain it that way. So it sucks because I'm like, I like the thickness of my legs. I wanna keep that, but every time I try to lose weight, the thickness goes away, but not in the area that I want, which is here. I'm like, I wanna get rid of it here. So that's why I started incorporating ab routines 
uh, try to get some, if I, if I can't get rid of the thickness here, at least what I can do is like, build muscle in that area. And I have been really lazy at building muscle in this area. I never do abs. Um, and even when I did try to do abs, I would get cramps all the time. So um, my goal is to try to just start using this machine more often. I have been using it. And then I'm gonna start doing a little bit of more floor work, but not in today's video. That's gonna be for another day. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to do this machine. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. I've got it on 185 pounds and you're just gonna crush. So let's do it. One, two, and I'll do about 25 of these. Three, you ever seen that video? That, the video that it's like, it's from Whoa Vicky. She's like, a lamb, damn, nah, eight, Sam, <laughs> six, <laughs> a lamb. <laughs> I don't know how many that was. Uh, 20, 21. Elam. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to do uh, four, three more of those. And then I'll be done with the workout. We had a really good workout, or at least I think that was a good workout. That was my triceps and my bicep routine. Tomorrow, I'm going to be tackling chest and back. Like I said, it's not my usual routine because it's a Friday. So I won't talk anymore. You guys have a lot to digest in this video, whether that's workout tips and you want to start working out or you just want to answer some of the questions that I proposed to you guys on the video itself. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think about this new series if you're going to be tuning in in the future. And go ahead and visit my website, SamuelAbrahamPerez.com to find out more about what I do. There's a lot that I do on this YouTube channel. This is just one of the things that I started doing. I also have an online church that anybody can be a part of. And so I invite you to hop on in there. It's on Discord, the amazing app that is Discord. And if you really, really like the video and you want to see me continue to do more, I challenge you to become a monthly partner with us and start giving monthly to the ministry. It's good for taxes anyway, so consider it a nonprofit. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you guys later in the next video. Peace out.